Today on Journalism Showcase, an inside look at the Silver Way Film Festival. How people could be affected by a possible change to minimum wage. As a new business owner, wages are definitely one of the higher expenses that I have to deal with on a monthly basis. And the difficult search to find a sitter if you have a child with special needs. The pay is about half of what it is in Saskatchewan. So the, the better the pay, the more likely you are to attract workers to it. Hello, I'm Joel Constantine. Welcome to Journalism Showcase, produced entirely by New Brunswick Community College students. Throughout this program, we'll be showcasing work from the fall of 2011. We wear poppies to remember their sacrifices, but as Jocelyn Turner discovers, there are some subtle rules of etiquette that come with wearing a poppy. Poppies are over our hats, lapels, and even over our hearts, but there are some specific places we should wear them. I, I don't think it's right to have it on your hat. My, my husband's a vet, so no, they should wear it where they're supposed to wear it. But I do see people wearing them on the lapels, mm -hmm. but, and I've seen people wearing it on the hats, but I don't know. I think the etiquette is that you wear it over your heart. Ken Newman, the president of the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 11, says there are a few rules the members of the Legion follow when wearing a poppy. That would be the last Friday of uh, October. This um, year it would have been the 28th of October. And you, wear, you can wear your poppy right up to um, the end of November 11th, that night. Newman says Legion members always place the poppy over the heart. They do not wear a pin, even a Canadian flag, in the center of the poppy. A lot of people, they'll put a pin through the poppy, actually this is in a, in a sense defacing it, but if they're going to do that, we encourage legionnaires not to do it, but if the public's going to wear it, we can't very well stop them, but if they do put a pin through it, it would be best if they put the Canadian flag. Proper poppy etiquette is also spelled out in the legion bylaws. We wear the poppy as it's made, um, it's, it's a symbol of peace and remembrance for the war veterans. So we really don't want to dishonor that. Newman says Legion members and veterans also wear the poppy at veterans' funerals. They also leave their poppies on the wreaths during the Remembrance Day ceremony to show respect for the fallen. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Occupy protests continued through Remembrance Week in a number of New Brunswick cities. In Fredericton, organizers are preparing to face the upcoming cold weather. Behind that is our uh, our shelter. It's uh, made out of a tarpaulin that, uh, that we that we bought, and uh, some other donated tarpaulins. And it's not exactly warm in there, but it keeps us uh, dry, and uh, it's a bit of a windbreak. The protesters are planning to remain at their makeshift camps throughout the winter months. We're going to try and tough it out. Try and tough it out. Yeah. Occupy Fredericton has posted a wish list on their Facebook page asking for donations of parkas, battery packs, blankets, and other items. Hundreds of New Brunswickers sampled a taste of Hollywood in the provincial capital during the Silver Wave Film Festival. It was an opportunity to showcase some of the best films produced locally and abroad. Our Martin Poirier was at the event. If you like movies, you don't need to travel to Hollywood to see who walks on the red carpet or what is behind the silver screen. The Charlotte's Arts Centre in Fredericton is home to the New Brunswick Film Cooperative. This weekend it is host of the 11th annual Silver Wave Film Festival. With everything from short films to documentaries, a slew of directors, producers, actors and actresses will be attending this year's event. Uh, great, I uh, love all the films, I've been here for the shorts. Yesterday, and I watched uh, the shorts one and two. I went even for the midnight screening, so a good crowd too. So yeah, it's going pretty great. The festival started with the producers' reception, where guests and industry leaders rub shoulders and talk showbiz while enjoying refreshments and food. The film festival. It's an honor to be here. I'm thrilled to be one of the local filmmakers, really, and I owe so much to the film co-op and the volunteer members. It's a blessing. This year's event showcased French and English screenings from Canada and the world. Anyone screening the films was given a ballot to vote in the Viewers' Choice Awards. Festival sponsors offered a series of awards and prizes for excellence ranging anywhere from music composition to cinematography. 
It's pure talent, like shine through and see everybody come together and make a beautiful piece of art. Screenings were also held at the St. Anne Recreation Center. The auditorium was at full capacity with more than 400 people attending. It's very well done. It's my first time coming out, so it's really good. Pretty awesome. This is actually my first uh, day here. Yep. I didn't come yesterday or anything, and actually this is my first time uh, being at the film festival. The three-day gala closed with a New Brunswick feature at the UNB campus and a party afterwards. Earlier this year, the Department of Wellness, Culture and Sport cancelled the New Brunswick tax credit. There are high hopes in the film community that the credit will once again be given a green light. The tax credit is critical to the independent New Brunswick filmmakers and to the industry. In Fredericton, Martin Poirier, New Brunswick Community College News. You may have noticed more mustaches in November. That's because it's being called Movember to increase cancer awareness. Ethan Hazlitt reports. It's Movember, which means more men are trimming their beards to make a unique mustache. The global movement is meant to raise awareness about prostate cancer. My grandfather passed away as a result of that, so... Um, yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, I think it's a, uh, a great thing to do. Whatever a person can do to bring awareness and, and uh, help in a cause, it's great. Across the globe, men are growing out their stashes to raise awareness about the many cancers affecting men, particularly prostate cancer. According to a recent release by Stats Canada, over 37,000 Canadian men died of cancer in 2008. That's about half the population of St. John. People like Kyle Hempel have started their own teams in a hope to raise awareness. It's a kind of a competition between me and my friend who can get the most money donated towards them. People rate their mustaches. Pictures are uploaded to Movember.com where people can vote on the best mustaches. They can also adopt a mustache and make donations. Hempel says that for some, raising awareness is not their goal. So most people just see it as a cause to grow a mustache, but there's actually people trying to raise money for the cause. So. Although some use Movember as just an excuse to grow a mustache, the root of the campaign is to raise awareness about prostate cancer. To learn more, you can go to Movember.com. In Woodstock, Ethan Hazlitt, Community College News. Coming up, ways to make buying holiday gifts affordable. We have games for all of those systems and often they're at a fraction of the price that what you could buy them anywhere else in town. And see what it's like to visit our program for the day. For more NBCC news stories, go to jschoolnbcc.ca. Welcome back. If you would like to see more of our stories, visit jschoolmbcc.ca. The rules for people who earn tips could result in earning less than minimum wage. Some restaurant and bar owners here in New Brunswick like the idea. Michael McDonald reports. Kristen Briggs stocks the fridge of her new business. She's concerned she might not be able to afford help. As a new business owner, Wages are definitely one of the higher expenses that I have to deal with on a monthly basis. The government is examining the possibility of having servers earn less than minimum wage because they already earn tips. Briggs isn't convinced the change will be good for business. It would be better in a sense that there's going to be more money coming through the door and less wages going out. Bushaib Dawin owns a restaurant in Woodstock. He says the wage change is a boon for employers as well as employees. So that means that employee, if she's upset now, she'll be worse down the road because her employer is going to cut her hours. You can make $10 an hour, but I can afford to give you 40 hours. It's going to be 20 hours. Dowin is against an increase of the minimum wage because he claims it doesn't benefit employees or employers. So who is the winner? Is the government. He's not the employee. Is not the employer because more money they make the employee more cut from their paycheck. To access the government survey on the issue, visit gnb.ca slash consultations. The online poll is open till mid-December. Business owners like Dao Win are hopeful the government will make the changes. They'd be following the lead of provinces like Ontario who've already made the cuts. In Woodstock, Michael McDonald, Community College News. The Christmas shopping season has arrived. Students on a budget may have a difficult time finding affordable gifts for the family. 
Our newsroom came up with some inexpensive gift ideas for the holiday season. I even thought about it at all for Christmas thing? Uh, well, not a whole lot really, I guess. Try and work as much as I can. Don't really have much of a budget because uh, I'm poor and going to school. Well, I'm more or less on a time budget myself, so I'm just buying gift cards for everyone. <laughs> Trying to come up with inexpensive Christmas ideas when on a budget may be challenging. So we in the community college newsroom came up with a few inexpensive gift ideas for the holidays. When buying for a gamer or a movie fan, pawn shops may be a good place to start. Some shops have movies for as cheap as $2, and it's not likely you will have to spend more than $20 on a game. And there's always a chance of finding some hidden treasures while there. Ken Hathaway works at the local pawn shop and believes that they have the best prices in town. We have games for all of those systems and often they're at a fraction of the price that what you could buy them anywhere else in town. If you have a credit card and some self-control, eBay can be a valuable resource. You can find anything and everything on your shopping list and shop by sorting items by price so it's easy to tell what's in your price range. For artistic people, a great option might be drawing or painting something for a family member. But if you're not artistic, don't worry. Try writing and personalized letters or even poems. I actually make a lot of my Christmas presents for best friends and stuff, scrapbooking and whatnot. Personalized coupons might also be the perfect gifts you can make for your loved ones. Fill them out with anything from one shoveled driveway or even offer to prepare Christmas dinner. But what most parents want from their kids is for them to be home. So strap a bow to your head and try and find a way to make it home for Christmas. In Woodstock, Tony Bourgeois, Community College News. There may not yet be snow on the ground, but that's not stopping towns and cities from getting in the festive spirit. The first town in our province has a new name for its celebrations. Martin Poirier has the story. Christmas is only about five weeks away. Here in Woodstock, what used to be the Victorian Christmas has been renamed. The town is now preparing for New Brunswick's first town Christmas. The town crew has been working very hard over the past couple weeks to uh, put up all the decorations. Uh, there's several trees, uh, figurines, uh, bows go up on the lampposts. Uh, a lot of the downtown merchants take a lot of time, decorate their windows, uh, their storefronts. The downtown core doesn't seem very festive at the moment, but starting Friday, November 18th, the streets will glow with holiday cheer with the Festival of Lights. The Special Olympians Torchlight Parade with Santa kicks off just before 7 p.m., followed by lighting ceremonies. A choir will also sing Christmas songs on the waterfront and hot chocolate will be served in the square. The night's highlight will be fireworks at 7.30. Other events are planned through Christmas. On November 26th, uh, Saturday night from 7 to 9, up at the old Victorian, um, or sorry, the old Carleton County Courthouse, we will be having our annual fundraiser. It's a concert that we put on every year um, promoting uh, old time Christmas. Merchants will also have special shopping hours and midnight madness to help customers juggle the busy season and have time to shop for family and friends. It is also an incentive to shop locally for the holidays. In Woodstock, Martin Poirier, Community College News. Faculty and staff at NBCC Woodstock took part in a strategic planning meeting in November. The Strat Chat session focused on fostering ties between college departments and establishing a strategic direction for the organization. Consultant Kathleen Howard facilitated the meeting. Why don't we call them strat chat, so strategic conversations. So it's really about how do you engage people in learning about the future. This is about how do you keep current, how do you keep present, how do you keep everybody learning. Local business people were also invited to the session in an attempt to strengthen the college's ties to the community. When the cold weather hits, it also brings challenges for animal shelters. The SPCA is seeing increased hurdles this year. Brad Wilson reports. The SPCA has taken in over 700 animals already this year. In October, 149 dogs were seized in northern New Brunswick. On top of the usual spike in strays, a severe strain has been put on available lodging and supplies. We're always looking for donations of canned food, dog and cat canned food. We go through you know, quite a fair amount of it. With the winter season here, the SPCA has become more important than ever before. The public can help out with other items beyond food. Litter's provided to us, okay. but we do like blankets, canned food, cheese whiz. Um, cheese we use it in our callings for the dogs. 
Okay. Um, yeah, like any type of dog, like hard, chewy dog treat. More pets have been dropped off at the SPCA than they are equipped to handle. They rely on volunteers to provide foster homes until adopted. To keep up with demand, volunteers also help care for the animals at the shelter. We definitely rely on our volunteers to do so much that we don't get to do, walking the dogs, you know, playing with the cats. If you are interested in helping, officials here say you need only come in to do a little paperwork. Yeah, we have an application they fill out. Once it's on file, they're welcome to come in whenever they have some free time. The SPCA is a cost-efficient route when looking for a new family friend. At the shelter, you can adopt a puppy for $200 kittens for $150, and adult animals for a fraction of that cost. At a pet store, the purchase of a puppy can cost you upwards of $1,000. Um, we prefer the SPCA over a pet store. We have adopted two cats from there and are looking at possibly adopt, uh, adopting a dog in the summer. The SPCA currently has over 100 dogs and cats more than this time last year. Adoption rates do usually slow down in winter, but this has certainly been an unusual year. Brad Wilson, Community College News. Coming up, some renovations that you can do to your home to save you thousands. It, it's hard getting people out to these things, even if they are, they are free. This show is just one of many produced by the students of NBCC Woodstock. Keep your eyes open for the next show on Rogers Television. Finding a sitter can be as easy as flipping through your local newspaper or asking your neighbor to watch your children. Families who have children with special needs may not find the search to be easy. Jocelyn Turner has more. Should I use different colors for the letters? Maybe I will. Beth Jordan Sletton works on a birthday card with one of her clients. Jordan Sletton moved to New Brunswick from Saskatchewan and says finding the job with her current client was by chance. We met at the local water pump and I asked him if uh, yeah, his son had, uh, was attending a day program, if there was such a thing in this town because I had looked for one and hadn't been able to find one. Jordan Sletton says there are a few support workers in the area. The struggle could be because the pay is low. The pay is about half of what it is in Saskatchewan. So the, the better the pay, the more likely you are to attract workers to it. Traveling can be an issue for support workers. Another support worker commutes long distances and says bad weather may mean a late arrival. Usually you're traveling about probably anywhere between a half an hour to 45 minutes or an hour. Families in southeastern New Brunswick rely on active care support services, but the program has a high staff turnover. Pay inequity, so the training that goes into uh, what you need to qualify to be a support worker, they are, you know, disheartened when the, when the workers get actually out into the job, they realize that uh, the pay is not going to cut it in a lot of cases for them. Both support workers agree with McAllister. They say traveling is a disadvantage to workers and clients. You know, everybody wants to work great right within the urban community. They don't want to, uh, to travel if they don't have to. McAllister also says the workers he has had over the years do not stay with support services very long. He says staff can handle more clients, even with the decrease in number of support workers. Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. Everyone likes to save money. The Fallsbrook Center gave a seminar at NBCC Woodstock on simple renovations that could save you thousands. The seminar explored new home renovations and government grants. Jason Yearling discussed how simple things like insulation can be great long-term investments and could save homeowners hundreds of dollars every year. Your link was disappointed by the low turnout. Yeah, kind of, but it's, it's hard getting people out. I mean, we, we write articles and we put up posters and it's hard getting people out to these things, even if they are, they are free. Like, he is concerned that people are not aware or simply do not care about issues close to home. NBCC Woodstock held an open house in November. High school students had the opportunity to tour the school and see the different programs offered. Kyle DuPont has more. High school students were roaming the halls of the college for the showcase event. They had a chance to see what goes on in different programs. The day offers a unique look at what they can expect in a post-secondary environment. Students watched the licensed practical nursing program in action and had a chance to try out some of the landscaping equipment. Our Brad Perry spoke with Erica Elliott of District 14. 
I think it definitely shows them what's available and gives them some things to think about and an opportunity to ask questions, and that probably will help to set them on a path. Our journalism class set up a camera and prompter in the newsroom. We gave students the chance to test their skills as an anchor. More clips like these will appear in future episodes. Hello, I am Elizabeth Williamson from Heartland Community School. I visited the New Brunswick Community College in Woodstock and toured the journalism program and others. My favorite program is journalism. For more NBCC news stories, go to jschoolnbcc.ca. Other NBCC campuses will be holding similar events throughout the year. High school students got to see exactly what goes on in the newsroom. As they toured, they got to see first and second year students working to produce this particular show. In the college newsroom, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Somber weather overshadowed Remembrance Day ceremonies across the province. The heavy rain in Sackville did not prevent people from taking part. As the veterans marched the streets, people stood to honor their heroic efforts of the past. <laughs> Rain-soaked people gathered at the local cenotaph to remember the sacrifices made by our soldiers throughout history. Wreaths were laid at the foot of the monument in honor of fallen loved ones. The rain died down before the ceremony began in Woodstock. Boys up! Quick! March! Veterans marched up Main Street to the cenotaph. Along with the veterans, the local RCMP and police and fire departments all took part. Many young cadets representing the future of our armed forces joined the procession. Premier David Allward also attended. The saying goes, you are what you eat, but you may be surprised to hear what is sometimes purposely put into your food to enhance the flavor. As Martin Poirier reports, one controversial additive may be hidden in your food and may have serious health consequences. Preservatives and other additives have been in our foods for decades. It has been widely used since the 1950s. We walk the grocery aisles and choose what is best for our health. But there is one additive in particular that is so elusive that it hides in our foods and goes by many names on the label. Uh, textured protein, gelatin, um, uh, monopotassium glutamate, hydrolyzed plant protein, um, yeast food nutrition. This is monosodium glutamate, or MSG. The Canadian Health Organization considers this additive safe, but many experts in the field disagree. There are thousands of documented studies dating back as far as 1969 that show the ill effects of MSG. In fact, it may be the most studied additive. Some scientists conclude that allergic reactions, obesity, and neurological disorders are caused by elevated dosages of MSG. These individual studies of, uh, oh, you'd need a mass dose of it for it to affect, but very few are looking at what a long term. Health Canada considers MSG safe and requires it to be listed on food labels as an ingredient. But it does not have to be mentioned if it is a byproduct of another process. MSG can be found in almost all processed foods. Most fast food and chain restaurants use MSG in their seasonings, meats, and sauces. Monosodium glutamate can make the blendest and low-quality foods taste great. Industry has had to keep a certain taste, but yet uh, keep it cost-effective and money in their pockets, unfortunately. So it's been at the um, disservice for our health. Wendy Cummings says that the best way to avoid MSG is to read the labels, buy fresh produce, and find local farmers that have free-range animals. In Woodstock, Martin Poirier, Community College News. That's our show for today. Stay tuned for other journalism showcases. For more of our work, visit us at jschoolnbcc.ca. Thanks for watching.